before we start, uh, before we start, uh, just remind some rules. So yeah, please cut your mics. Uh, you will be able to ask questions at the end. Uh, also, if you have some questions, feel free to put them in the chat uh, here. So uh, Lucas is able to kind of uh, filtrate them and uh, and prepare some answers uh, and choose them in the order for the team at the end. Also, second thing, the meeting is uh, is recorded because uh, at the end we'll put it on um, on YouTube. So if you don't want to people to see your face, don't share your your camera. Uh, and uh, and that's it. That's it. That's it. So I will leave the floor to Maxime, Solène, and Ena. So just for you to know who they are. So Maxime, uh, Ena, and Solène are part of the innovation team. Uh, so the innovation team is working on proof of concept, tooling, uh, also developing things on Massa. Uh, it's a new team uh, which has been implemented for the last six, last six months, uh, and they are very happy to show you their work uh, and also. The goal today, well, they are going to present you the goal today, uh, and I give the floor to them. Let's go. Let's kick off. Well, uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, once again, it's, uh, it's a real pleasure. We are very glad uh, that you could join us for this very live session with, uh, with the innovation team. Um, as Vincent said, we're pretty, uh, pretty much a, a new team. Like uh, uh, In total, we are about uh, 10. Uh, and I'm sure you will meet uh, others uh, during the coming uh, live uh, sessions we will uh, organize. Um, but today uh, with you, I'm, I'm Solène and I'm a product manager uh, in the innovation team. Hi, it's me and um, again, the product manager in innovation team. Max, uh, the first developer of the innovation team. <laughs> the first by, uh, I mean, the, the first arrived, not the best. <laughs> <laughs> We will we will judge later. <laughs> so as uh, as Vincent said during this uh, this this session, we we mostly wanted to to share two um, two things uh, with, with you. The first one is uh, is how you can participate and innovate uh, with us with uh, with Anna, uh, that will explain you how we work and how we would like to embed you in uh, in uh, in this journey. And the second thing is. Uh, how you can develop uh, on top of uh, Massa blockchain with Max and so with the one of the toolkit that we have uh, developed. Uh, okay. Once again, we'll just uh, say it again, but uh, we will take time at the end uh, to answer your questions. So feel free to uh, to use the chat, uh, send them uh, throughout the whole uh, session, and we will make sure we we answer uh, as much as we can. Uh, before jumping in the in the details, uh, uh, very very quickly, let me share our mission uh, in the innovation team, so you don't we don't have any more uh, uh, secrets. Uh, our mission is to solve uh, real life problems uh, by mas maximizing, sorry, uh, the blockchain functionalities and especially, of course, massa blockchain uh, functionalities. Okay, so. Um, yeah. <laughs> now uh, let's see how basically the classic process of uh, developments go in the innovation team. Uh, we usually generate ideas from many different places, but our work mainly is driven by you, well, the community that we work with. Uh, to generate ideas, we turn to many sides, but uh, out of the most common ones, standard, like uh, we do uh, market research, we do some customer research, uh, but as well do in-house research on what mass blockchain allows in terms of applications that maybe other blockchains can do. Uh, here, it's maybe important to note like autonomous smart contracts. Uh, and most, in most importantly, we drive the ideas from your needs, pains and opinions that, um, that basically we get by communicating um, through our Discord and GitHub channels. Uh, once we gather uh, these ideas, we investigate and collect all necessary information to evaluate whether the idea is viable or, or, or not um, for us to work on. And uh, good and selected ideas, uh, we basically start developing. And once their kind of proof of concept is ready, which is the first version of the product, uh, again, we turn to the community uh, to user test um, our proof of concepts. Um, we conducted user tests on our on all of our, of our products that we currently are developing and that have been developed. And uh, we do this with volunteers from the community. And maybe this is a great time actually to say thank you guys to all of you who participated uh, and to encourage those that didn't to you know volunteer and savings Kesha uh, add us to the to the community of testers. So then 
Yes, exactly. Some uh, some months ago, we reached out to to you, uh, and we had uh, some uh, huge enthusiasm about one of our first uh, uh, services, uh, Massa Web on Chain. Um, you can see on the slide uh, some of the innovation teams' uh, uh, favorite uh, websites. Um, that, by the way, we're on testing thirteen, uh, testnet thirteen. Uh, I'm sure you've uh, followed us, and you know we are now on seventeen. So. Um, I count on you to to go back and uh, on the latest version and uh, update them again or some new ones. Um, but yes, uh, thanks to you uh, and thanks to your feedback, we we managed to improve uh, our our service. And earlier uh, this week, we were able to to launch it. So as you can see, uh, I can encourage more. Okay, I'll encourage you more uh, to to go read the article and uh, and uh, install it if not done uh, already. Yeah, similarly to what just Salen said about their in web on chain, uh, a few weeks ago, we uh, reached out to our builder community to test the first version of the smart contract playground. Uh, with this project, we wanted to start building the tool that will allow our community to easily communicate and share knowledge uh, on smart contracts uh, that, that are written in assembly script, basically how massive contracts are written. Uh, and uh, using Playground at the moment, smart contract developer can quickly test uh, some functions and share code between peers. Um, and all of this is done in a serverless uh, environment. Uh, the Playground will evolve from the first version as well as well as Terra, as well as Web on Chain and all of other products. And this is based most uh, mostly based on the generous feedback we get from you. So now that we kind of finished with this intro part, uh, Max will take us to the smart contract world and showcase the use how to use the toolkit that we have been working on so far. Uh, I will also send like a message here in the chat with all of the useful links uh, that you guys can follow uh, through with. Uh, what Solan mentioned with the links to explore the products and also what Max is going to speak about at the, about the important reps. Okay, enjoy. Thank you. So, <clears throat> what we are going to to see now is a simple way to play and develop smart contract at Massa. Because I don't know if you notice, if you already work a bit with smart contract, it's quite difficult. It's normal because we have a, a new tech and we need to build tools around that new tech. Um, so what we created is a project on GitHub called uh, the Massa SC Toolkit. Uh, we will provide you all the links, so don't worry about this. Um, you don't have to note everything. Uh, that toolkit um, allows through a CLI, so a line command, to initialize a project like a repo with all the, um, the tools that you need to, 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 to create and to develop smart contract, um, such as um, gener um, generating the good dependencies to work with Massa. Um, give, it gives you a smart contract example. It gives you test templates, uh, compiler, and deployer, OK? So what I'm going to do now is just to just to create a new repo with that command. It's really simple. I'm just going to to trick a bit uh, because of the last version of the testnet. I have to do it on another branch, but you, when you will do it, it will be okay. You will be able to do it on the main branch because we didn't manage to 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 merge everything yet. So I'm going to generate uh, that repo with the, the command, and it will install um, the dependencies at the same moment. So for those who know npm, it will run the npm install at the execution of the of the command. Um, I call my project demo, so I'm going to go in demo and ask VS Code to open, and it opens. So. I'm going to go a bit onto the architecture of the project. It's quite simple, you're going to see. The first one, and I think the most important one, is the assembly folder. The assembly folder is composed of two folders. The first one is the test that is in charge to embed it, all the testing file, all the unit testing file that will test your contracts. Your contracts are in the contracts folder, OK? Um, then we have a compiler. The compiler is a script that allows to scan that same contract folder in order to create a compiled smart contract linked to each assembly script file that are into that folder. So we can compile, we can write smart contract, we can test them, and we can also deploy them with a deployer. I'm not going to go 
um, very deep into the deployer. The only thing you have to know is that we are using a library um, that is called Massa Web Free. You may know it if you already play with smart contract in order to deploy uh, the smart contract in an easy way. The Massa Web Free library is just wrapping the RPC API call of the node, but in an easier way and in an um, easy, um, integ integrable way, let's say. And we have another folder that is not yet working, unfortunately, because of the uh, the seventeenth update. Uh, but we will update it, of course. And the simulator, the ID is to mock a blockchain, like a ledger, and all the transactions of the blockchain, but on your file system without running a node. That means that if you have a smart contract, you are able to deploy it. You are able to interact with it and see the impact of that interaction onto the storage of the smart contract itself. But I will not go into it, but you have to know that later we'll have that wonderful tool in order to, to, to ease the development because it's easier to like uh, deploy a smart contract, play with it. Here, just have to simulate and it's like immediately. So we have seen the uh, architecture of the, um, of the project. I'm just going to go uh, on the example smart contract. Um, the example smart contract is really simple. We have only two functions that are exported, the set storage one that will set a variable into the storage with the key test and the value value, and the event will emit an event. This is a really simple smart contract that we put here in order to say to the people that are starting, okay, uh, you can do this. But we are not going to play with two smart contracts because in fact, they are really simple. We are going to go a bit further um, and playing with the famous, uh, I think the most famous smart contract, uh, it's the, the ERC20, of course. So I import this contract and also few libraries. I'm going to go on it, don't worry. First of all, um, the token.ts file is the implementation of the token itself. So you will retrieve on this contract all the functions that are exposed by the standard ERC20, such as the name, the symbol, the total supply, the decimal, uh, the balance of the transfer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, all those functions are callable. Only the functions, sorry, with the export are callable uh, by. Uh, by outside the smart contract and the function without the export are not callable by outside the smart contract. I just want to show you uh, one thing that is quite interesting on those, onto that smart contract. It is the initialize function um, that is like for those who know Solidity and other blockchain, it's like a constructor, you know, uh, it's the where the storage will be set and which way it will be set at the initialization at the deployment of the smart contract. And you will see how we used it, this, um, this function. So this is the implementation of the token. I will not go on all the code. You can check it out. It works the same as uh, a classic ERC20 on the other blockchain. Then I'm going to go on the token deployer because in fact, we will need to, to deploy that smart, that smart contract. And how are we going to do it? We are going to do it with a special smart contract because at Massa, in order to deploy a smart contract, you need to take one smart contract to, to write into that smart contract that you want to deploy another smart contract that is already compiled. And so that smart contract, that deployer smart contract, will write onto the blockchain the content, the bytecode of the smart contract, and also perform some other action. So here, what is going on onto the main function? The Two first line are the most important, I would say. It's the, the fact to deploy, to really associate an address to the bytecode of a smart contract. So here, what is going on? We have the file to byte array function that is a transformer. A transformer in assembly script is a bunch of code that at the compilation of the, the file will replace um, the, the, the function. So it will replace this function by uh, whatever we want. So here, this function will replace uh, all this by uh, the content in bytes of my token, but compiled. So the real smart contract will be something like that with bytes, uh, one, two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, then uh, we took these bytes. Uh, we used the IBI function from Massa create smart contract in order to associate it uh, to the smart contract it returned. So we have now the address of our smart contract, which is good because we didn't know it before. So in order to retrieve the address of our smart contract, we will emit an event just after the deployment of the smart contract. Also, we will send some coin that coin are not ERC20, it is Massa coin, in fact. We'll send, I think it's 20 coin because it's 10 um, power nine. Um, we, we send 12, um, 20, sorry, token uh, Massa coin, sorry, to the smart contact address in order for him to be able to store things in its own storage. Because as for now, this is how storage, storage costs are implemented. And this is, this is what is really interesting. This is the, the initial, initialize function where I, I just talked about this one. Why are we calling this initialize function here? Because if we are not doing this here in the same function, because yeah, I forget to say this, but this function is executed atomically. That means that if this function, if sorry, this function failed like the last one, all the other one will be reverted and your smart contract will not be deployed. What is good with that is you are 100% sure that the initialization of your contract will be done at the deployment. So that means that you will not be front run by anyone else that wanted to initialize your smart contract um, repl replacing you, okay? So uh, this is uh, seen. I'm going now to um, really simply um, compile my, my smart contract because now we didn't compile yet um, do smart contract. So as I told you, it will scan all the TS file in the contracts folder and it will associate for each of those uh, assembly script file, um, a WASM file and other file that are generated by the compilation of assembly script. So we just have to run the NPM run build. Um, yeah, I forget. If you want to have a look on all the commands that are available, you can just check um, here uh, all the commands. Um, and I think I have a little issue. Um, sorry about that. Up. This is the classic demo effect, Max. <laughs> this is the classic demo effect, in fact. I'm sorry, guys, just one second. I think I mixed up two little things. It would be very fast. If someone has a question, we can maybe just answer to one, uh, Solène, if you have something. Yeah, I was thinking is a question, or I'm, uh, I'm getting my job, uh, my job book to see if I have any jokes, <laughs> but maybe questions are better. Uh, no, you quit. Um, <laughs> what did you say? I know no, nothing. Well, here, I think I also, yeah, we, we do. Um, I'm many Christian, I'm a shark leader. <laughs> wow, when I look here, it's something that I could sci fi in sci fi movies. <laughs> Almost <laughs> how, how fast he can write or uh, to, um, only to paste on everything what he have in mind. Almost in between, one su human su supercomputer. Wow. Nice compliment from X. <laughs> Thank you. I, I cannot answer because I, I'm thinking. So, <laughs> I'm so sorry, mate. Yes, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, uh, I, I will, I will cut that. Uh, I will cut that for the replay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm on it. It's okay. Uh, I found the, the the solution. Okay. We I have think. one more question if you want, Max. So. Yeah, you can. Is there anything? Well, is there anything like remote state read? Anything like remote state read? What do you mean by remote state read? I think I don't follow. It's Tralcan. Tralcan is building a project right now on Zilliqa uh, about like uh, identity. So maybe Tralcan, you can you can uh, 
What can I say? Hi, guys. Hi, say, everyone. Is there, yeah, hello. Hello, thanks a lot. Hey. All right. Yeah, so I'm Tralcan. Um, so at the moment, I'm here in Bariloche in Argentina. So it's it's very nice to, to meet you all. And yeah, I'm exploring Masa. And as Vincent mentioned, we're implementing as a sovereign identity protocol, which it's using a lot of the uh, remote state read, which is basically like reading from one smart contract, the state of another one in order to execute something, for example, like social recovery. Our implementation of social recovery, uh, it uses keys stored in a in certain contract, but this verification is done uh, on the SSI, so on the smart contract of the user. Therefore, we kind of need that type of um, remote read. So reading the state of another smart contract at the time of execution. I was wondering if you have anything like that uh, implemented or perhaps uh, in the ro roadmap. I'm sorry, I think I don't understand your question. If you want, we can have a, a talk me, maybe together after. Yes, uh, me, me I, I, I understand also part of the question because, uh, but basically what you want uh, is to be able with your smart contract to read another smart contract. Yeah, the state. Yeah. So but everything is safe. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that the execution at the moment, like if the if the correct me if I'm wrong, Max, but if the smart contract cha changes the state, uh, at the moment you don't have the option to read the previous state. But this is something that we keep in mind for the future future developments to allow oh, uh, the different. It's... Mm -hmm. it's more like you if we have two smart contracts so smart contract a and b All right yeah so smart contract a is able to read the state of so course. the variables are saved in the state of smart contract b at the time at the time of execution of a transaction uh on the smart contract a so basically we save some information on a saying that hey if you want to execute this transaction, just read what is the current state of smart contract B, and based on that, uh, continue. Okay, so me, but you mean inside the smart contract, like not externally? Yeah. yeah, inside the smart contract, this has not been implemented yet, like a trigger, a condition to run something. Uh, is it what you mean? Like yeah. automatically? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I think that this is not implemented yet. This is in the pipe. Uh, but I don't know the state, to be honest. So all right, that's okay. Yeah. So it is it is planned somewhere in the in the pipeline. Yeah, yeah. Especially so because of the autonomous smart contracts, for example, we want to have triggers. Uh, so reading the state of another smart contract is definitely in the pipe. And as well, just for you, tomorrow there is a call with Aurelien within the core team. So other features, uh, other demo. It's a bit different than today. Uh, also, it will definitely be able to be answer this question to answer this question. And if not, I will put you in touch with uh, Damir, uh, the CTO, so you can have a better vision for when it's going to come. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, we have found that it's super useful also for social recovery. If we want to use, you know, like friends or family as guardians, it's really important to to be able to have that future if we want to have like high security at the time of um, verification. And being able to read, you know, what is the current state of your guardians. Um, so yeah, thanks so much. No problem. So I repair my uh, my problem, and I run the uh, npm run build that allows me just to remember uh, to compile all the contracts that are under assembly contracts. So it recognized that he has two files to compile, and he puts me all the files onto under the build folder. What is going to interest us is the dot, uh, all the dot wasm file. So now that we have all our smart contract deployed, uh, compiled, sorry, what we are going to do is by using the deployer, what we just saw, um, we are going to specify which smart contract we want to deploy. And in fact, we are not going to deploy the implementation, but we are going to deploy to execute um, the token deployer because it is the token deployer that will be uh, uh, create the smart contract with the bytes and associate the address to the smart contract. OK, so what we are going to do is to specify the uh, path of the compiled smart contract. So the token deployer that was M. 
And I think that it will not work because in fact, I didn't configure my uh, .env example. In fact, he's telling me that, hey, you didn't put any private key, so you cannot sign any transaction. So yeah, it's not working. So I'm going to specify mine. You can take it. I have no code on it. I don't care. Uh, and also I changed the RPC because the testnet one is KO actually. So I'm using another uh, network that is ISO to the testnet, um, but it, it's called the labnet. We are using it internally. I'm going to change the name of the .env because it's .env example. And I'm going to run again the deployment with the same command. It will take a few seconds if you want, uh, and Solen uh, will provide you all the information about that. Uh, we have a nice collection of uh, all the RPC call that can be made on the node. Uh, and here, for instance, it, the, the command line prompt me, hey, you have this operation that is ongoing. If I want to check my operation, I can go on the get operation call to paste the key of the operation to send it and see that in fact, my transaction, that is an execute SC, is ongoing. So it will take apparently a few seconds. We are going to wait. And if we want, we have also call called get filtered SC output event that will show us the event emitted by the smart contract. And in fact, it finished. So the deployment success with the event, blah, 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 blah. And we can remark that it is exactly the string that we have formatted the contract deployed at with the address of our smart contract. So cool, we have the address of our uh, smart contract. We can verify here also, it's the same, it ends by WR, cool. Um, now what we want to do with our smart contract, it is deployed, we want to interact with the smart contract. So to interact with the smart contract, we need to call the function that are exported by this smart contract. For instance, we are going to check if the initialization has been well set. So to do that, we are going to use another smart contract that has exactly the same pattern as this one, except that it has not any deployment like the file to byte array and the create sc there is nothing of that here it is simply an atomic execution of different call on smart contract and here i'm going to introduce two new things the concept of the argument class uh, that we created at massa and the other one is the wrapper concept that is all the calls uh, through the different contract because in fact um, as you maybe know, a smart contract is completely isolated. And if you don't expose some function in the smart contract, um, if you don't expose some function, you cannot do anything with it. Like if there are no function to change the, uh, a part of the storage on the smart contract, you will not be able to add them later. Um, and to call those function exported, what we need to do, and I already show you here, uh, we use, no, I didn't show it to you. And this is bad, I forget. Because when we deploy the smart contract, we emit an event, we transfer the coin, and also we are calling the initialize function through um, an ABI function that is call that you can, you can give in call an address. So the address of the contract you want to call, the name of the function. So here it is initialized. If we come back to the uh, implementation, it is initialized in fact, and the arguments and also the, the number of massa coin you want to pay for that uh, transaction. And the most important, I think it's the argument. And here comes the args class. The args class is a class uh, that allows to serialize and deserialize native types, uh, native types. And so when we have this object fully serialized, we can retrieve, him, retrieve it sorry, uh, in the function we call, because here you can see in parameter, we have a stringify args, and we can retrieve these args and deserialize it uh, by doing in the same order we serialize it. Because here, for instance, we, we make add with a name, name is a string. 
add with a symbol. Symbol is a string. This is a U32, U64, and this is an address type. So you need to keep the same order when you deserialize your arguments. Um, and this is in the implementation. So we start by the name, the symbol, the decimal, the total supply, and the address. It's exactly the same order. Okay, we have shown the arg, so we can come back to our uh, logger. And in our logger, what we are going to do, first of all, is to replace the address of the smart contract we have just deployed. So we copy paste it and we put it here in order to target the right smart contract. Now I'm going to talk about the token wrapper. The token wrapper is a simple class that we have um, not, not really simple, but in the concept, it's simple because it's a class that wraps all the exported code uh, from the implementation token, the token implementation, sorry, but uh, with a call. And why are we doing that? It's because um, you see that in the initialize, you need to give um, a stringify argument like a static array. Uh, you int eight and it's not really comfortable to work with that and if you want you can work with the token wrapper the token wrapper is doing exactly the same thing so here we have the call in order to initialize if i wanted to i could in my deployer here come and say okay i use my token wrapper uh and uh, no i'm not going to show it here but it's more here okay let's uh, let's see here so in order to initialize the token wrapper object, you just need to instantiate a new object with the address of your token. And then after, you will see that if I take token address, I can play, no, not token address, so it's token wrapper. I can play with all the functions that are exposed by the token implementation itself. So the mean, the name, the symbol, the total supply, etc., etc. And you will see that it's more pleasant to work with that compared to this. This is an example. Here you have uh, get the balance off and here transfer, it's more, uh, there are more stuff to write. So here, what we are going to check is two things. The first thing is to verify that our initialization has been well set it, like uh, the initialization is done. Uh, to do that, what we are going to do is to check the total supply the balance of the owner of the deployer, because on the deployment of the ERC20, we, deep, we transfer, we mint all the tokens to the owner of the contract on the deployer. And another user, a random user I took, um, that will be the receiver of a transfer that we will make later um, and an amount of the transfer, of course. So to sum up, Verify the state after initialization. Each time we are printing some events that we'll be able to retrieve in Postman. Um, doing a transfer function from the owner to the user one with an amount and also again, an amount of coin because it will not work if you don't do that. And after that transfer, verify that the token has been delivered to the owner, has been removed from the owner, the 1212 uh, token, and have been well um, transferred to the user one. So to do that, really simple, it's exactly the same way as we made uh, for, the, for the token deployer. So before that, as we modify this string, we need to rebuild our smart contract. So I will run a little build. After we will just have to run the deploy command with the associated file. Okay, uh, that is a builder uh, that is in build, yeah, and the name is logger that was M because the name of our file is logger. Logger that was M, and at the end of the execution of this function, we will have, if everything is good, a transfer um, done with an ERC20 on the Massa blockchain. Um, maybe I forget to mention something. Uh, these contracts, so the contracts uh, with the, the main pattern, 
are like executors. They are not, they, they have no address when you, deep, when you execute them. The only time you have a um, smart contract deploy on the blockchain at Massa, it's when you use the famous create SC function. This is the only way. In other case, it will not work. Uh, it will not deploy any smart contract because it is how we made it. So this, uh, the, the logger uh, execution has been finished. We are going to check onto Postman what, what has uh, going on. Going to go straight to the down. And I think we started something right here. So this was the deployment of our smart contract. This is, let me, one second, I'm going to take this here and here in order to check the code with you. So first event, uh, total supply. So I, with the token wrapper, I call the total supply. I generate an event, total supply, that is 10K. This is what we said. The owner balance should be 10K also because we didn't perform the transfer yet. It's 10K, cool. Then user one balance should be zero because no transfer. Then the transfer function itself emits an event onto the token implementation. So we would see a transfer event that is composed of the sender, receiver, and amount of the token. And then verify that our token has been yet uh, delivered. So the owner balance has 10K minus 12.12 token, and the user one has 12.12 token at the end. So to sum up, what we have done here is that we have generated a repo that allows us to import some smart contract in a really easy way. We are able to, to compile it, compile them before, sorry, before deploying. We are able to deploy them on the blockchain. And we are able also to interact with them and to create atomic scripts that you can execute uh, from, from the Node API blockchain uh, of Massa. Well, I think uh, it's everything. Uh, I saw everything I had to see on my side. Uh, it was a pleasure, guys, to share what I knew about uh, Massa. Uh, and now uh, you have the floor for the question, guys. Thank you, Max. You're welcome. And sorry for Thanks the, a little, lot. Uh, the little Thank problem at much. the build. <laughs> You solved it fast. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So thanks a lot, Max. Uh, yeah, please don't be shy. So as you saw, Falcon already had a question. Uh, uh, also, I already contacted him in, in private chat uh, to, to to answer his question uh, with, with with part of the team. So don't be shy if you have questions, uh, comments. Uh, I know some of you are building uh, Altai and others. Um, so let's go for it. And plus, we know each other, Altai. I'm trottoir. <laughs> we already talk uh, together. No we questions. There's all the all the links um, in in the chat, so so yeah, don't hesitate to to take them, use them uh, as as you want. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, um, thanks, Solen. So indeed, we are hey. going to share all the links. Ah, question. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Max. Yeah. For the presentation. I was wondering about the token wrapper. So this is something that we're using specifically for the fungible token. And then if we want to have something similar for a different type of smart contract, we need to make a specific wrapper for that one. Exactly. You can if you want, but we can imagine something that will we are not at, th at that point, but we can imagine something that will create a wrapper for you. Like it will, it reads your contract and mm -hmm. it creates uh, the the all the function, you know, by parsing or something like that. But yeah. as for now, if you want uh, to work with wrapper, you will have to buy to build your own one. Uh, and mm -hmm. to be honest, it's quite simple uh, to do. You just have to use the call function uh, mm -hmm. and the name, and then to to serialize your arguments. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. There we was another. Yes. Yeah. 
mm -hmm. uh, you can do you see it, Max, from Altai. Or can we test that wasm without deploying? Um, yes, we can. Uh, in fact, um, I cannot show you a lot because it's not working, but um, I can explain maybe a bit. The, the, the simulator, you give him um, a, an execution config JSON. And inside of it, you specify what you, what you want to do. So for instance, here, the first step is initial the ledger. The ledger have, has this address, these mocked addresses with that balances. Then I want to execute uh, a smart contract. Execute main is here uh, like a deploy. And in fact, so I think that will answer to, to your question. Uh, you, you can test some WASM into the simulator. And I will say more, you have to because it doesn't read any uh, assembly script. It only reads uh, some WASM. OK, is it answering to your question? Altai? Perfect. Yes. Nice. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you were still the emoji. Yeah. But once again, uh, it is not. Uh, not updated, so don't try to make it work. It will not. <laughs> no more questions? We have approximately like, but we are on time pretty much. Uh, also, I mean, even if like right now you don't have questions you want to ask in the live, uh, again, uh, like uh, Altai was already in contact with Maxim, Eli scientist as well uh, with the team. Uh, Tralcan also is already in contact with the team, so don't don't feel shy to 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 be in contact with the team afterwards. Plus, we'll post the link. And we have a new question. Of course, we can. Um, so, could we run with Massa Sandbox too? Uh, the Massa Sandbox is um, a node itself, like it works just as the test net or the main net will work. The only specificity on the, the, the Massa Sandbox is that you are alone on the network. But you know, when you run your node, you have an IP. And this is what I showed you. Here, you can specify any IP you want. Here, I am working on the lab net. But if you want to work on the main net, on the test net, or on your own node, you can put the IP of whatever you want. So yes, it is working uh, with the sandbox. Perfect. I think that's pretty much it, <laughs> Kesha. Yeah, um, so let's let's wrap it up. So I will upload, so we'll post the links in the different channels for everyone. Also in the public uh, announcement. Uh, so I didn't do the link public uh, just because uh, it was a bit more tech. So it was uh, better for all the builders and, and people who have been following for a while. The video will be uploaded online. We'll also put the links um, into the YouTube video description. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And if you have any questions, again, don't hesitate to ping uh, Ena, Solène, me, Maxime. I mean, the team is always happy to be in contact uh, and we'll do our best to answer you. And if not, to find someone who has a good answer for you um, and to create different chats. Uh, we love also the things you are building or exploring. Um, so thanks a lot for that. And thanks a lot again for all your feedback. So even if you are just at the beginning to try to build something, uh, we'll be happy for you to try and to criticize or uh, give positive feedback both ways uh, to let us know what we can change, improve, what you think is missing, uh, what you would like to see on the roadmap uh, for the tooling. Um, and that's it. Cool. Uh, yes, I leave the you. last word, the last word for the innovation team. Maybe do you want to say something? Okay. Before we close, for me, it was a pleasure to share uh, what I made uh, for the last, last six months. Um, and we carry on. And yeah, <laughs> we are going to, to make it better, like better and better and better.
Yes, exactly. It was the, the first of, uh, I hope, a long series of uh, live, uh, live coding session uh, with the innovation team. So catch you all very soon. And uh, thank you very much once again for, for joining us and for, uh, for all the feedback. Let's keep in touch. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers, guys. Bye.